In this video, I'm going to show you two ways of texturing your low poly objects. I'll show you the fast way and then the optimal way for exporting to game engines such as Unity. Also, I'll share some general tips about texturing low poly style objects and how I use these techniques in my workflow at the end. If you like what I do and the style of this low poly landscape you can see here, then check out my low poly landscape course with the special discount code in the description at only $15. Or you can buy my beginner's bundle, three courses including the landscape course at the ridiculously low price of $25. So let's get started with the first technique using color slots. So I've got a very basic scene set up here and this tree has no textures or materials. So I'll zoom in on the tree with period key and notice it's all one object, but we want the top to have green and the trunk to have brown. The easiest way to do that is with texture slots. And you can see the slots just here. At the moment, it's just got one slot with no material. When I add a new material to this, you can see that it creates this material slot here. I'm actually going to use one of the ones I've used before, so this green material here for the top of the tree. A quick note, my base color, I tend to not go fully saturated. I come in a bit from the outside of the circle and I don't usually go much beyond this level here with the value or down here for the darkness. Lastly, I tend to bring the roughness all the way to one. I think it gives it a nice soft look. So how do I texture the trunk with a different texture? Well, I create a new slot. So I'll click on the slots, add a new slot, and there it is. So under slot two here, I can then choose my brown bark material. Again, you can see the roughness is all the way to one, and the base color is at a similar saturation level. But how do we assign the brown material to the trunk? Well, if I go into edit mode, I actually have the trunk selected already. It's always best to do this in face mode because you're assigning it to faces. So I'll change the face mode up here, or press three on your keyboard, and incidentally, it's worth noting that these are actually separate pieces of one entire object. So I can press Alt-A to deselect all and L to select the different pieces. I'll press Alt-A again to deselect all and L to select the trunk. And now I can come down to my material slot area here, click on that and with brown bark selected, I can assign these faces to that slot. And you can see it's turned brown. Let's jump back to object mode so you can see that more clearly. And that's the easy way of texturing low poly objects. Now this way of texturing is great to start out with your objects because you can easily come in and adapt the colors really easily by adapting the materials. However, if we export this to a game engine, it's not particularly optimal. And it's my understanding that this can slightly slow down performance. It's minimal, but if you want to optimize your games, then we need to use what's called a texture atlas. So I'll delete those slots on this object and this time use a texture atlas. I'll create a new material. I'll name it texture atlas so it's nice and clear. And instead of using a base color, we use a material plugged into the base color. I've got a color palette or a texture atlas just here. And these are basically just grids of color that you can use to map your faces to. And I can drag that into my scene like so. I can then hook this up and instantly you can see some of the colors going onto my object. What we need to do now then is to assign the faces to the different colors of this palette. This is easiest to do in the UV editing workspace. So I'll zoom into my color palette. I'll bring out a new window as well so you can see the shader editor so there's no confusion. And zoom in so you can see that texture there going into the principal BSDF. And of course, use material preview mode. I'll zoom in on my objects. So we'll start with the trunk. I need to give these faces a position on my palette and therefore a color. But first we need to actually unwrap them. So I'm in edit mode. I have my trunk faces selected. And in edit mode, I can press U to go to the unwrapping menu. There's lots of different options here. You can just press the unwrap, but occasionally you'll get this error because there's actually no seams mark to unwrap it easily. So a better way would be to press U to unwrap and just project from view. And you can see what it's done. It's literally taken this angle here and put the faces into 2D over here. I can then select them all, scale them down with S, G to grab, and move them over the right slot. I'll just move that up slightly and zoom in so you can see that. Do be careful not to go too close to the edges so a bit of this blue doesn't bleed into your texture. And you can see that it's gone nicely brown here. So we can do the same for the bushy parts and make them green. I'll press Alt A to deselect all. Press L over one of the bushy parts to select it. I'll zoom out just a touch so you can see that. And you can see that's already been UV unwrapped. I can select all these with A, scale them all down, G to grab, and move them into a color position. I think this one looks good. Alt A to deselect all, L to select a new one. 
and I can actually select these both together because they have the same texture as this one. Let's pretend they didn't have a map here. I can press U to unwrap, check from view, A to select all and scale them right down, G to grab and again, move those into position and just scale them down a touch more to make sure. I'll press tab to go back into object mode and you can see it's been textured like the other ones. It is however a bit shiny as you can see, so I can come to my principal BSDF here and as I like to do, increase the roughness to give it that nice soft feel. Another big advantage of this texture atlas technique, as well as optimization, is that when I bring all these objects into Unity, we only have to assign one material to all our objects rather than lots of separate materials. For my personal workflow, I like to do it with texture slots so I can adapt the colors accordingly and then create a palette from that and link them up at the end for export. So hopefully that will help you with your low poly texturing. If you've got any questions, do comment below. Otherwise, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.